So the deep learning in Darba is, uh, I guess, a movement that we started back in 2017 with the aim of strengthening machine learning in Africa. And we're trying to build communities um, to train people and to highlight some of the fantastic work that's being done in Africa in machine learning and artificial intelligence. The machine learning and artificial intelligence community in South Africa and Africa is still relatively small but growing really, really quickly. Um, and so this event is part of a whole series of events all over the continent um, in an effort to bring all these subgroups of people together, both researchers and industry practitioners and students, um, and to both grow and strengthen this community at the same time. What can happen is that there's a vacuum, is that all the academics and industry people are busy and youngsters are just sitting around waiting for stuff to happen. Instead, what's happening is youngsters are getting up and saying, okay, let's self-organize, make stuff happen. And Indaba X is a lovely example of that. So I think it's great. And what makes these meetings very, very special is that um, there is an Indaba spirit behind them. So it's an idea not only to have a conference, a scientific conference, but also to kind of ask difficult questions about how Africa can engage in machine learning and artificial intelligence, especially because these topics will very much define the future of many, many societies and also African societies. So the types of talks, we're going to have some foundational talks, like starting from the basics, what is deep learning, uh, also like some reinforcement learning and practical examples of that. Then we also have research talks, cutting edge, uh, going to be talking about people's research in, in real life, what they're doing, uh, and this can extend in many different ways. And then we're also going to have industry ethics and policy talks where people are going to be going, talking about the experience in the trenches of applying deep learning, of extending deep learning, what's it like in an industry setting and, and how does it differ, uh, sometimes better, sometimes worse than like academic research and, and how would you apply this in real context? I did see a lot of very brilliant um, research here as well and it's very motivating and very inspiring and I think one of the biggest things I'm also taking out of this is being able to get feedback from other researchers and people who are interested in doing the same type of work and getting some proposal, proposals of how I can extend my research, add more data to it from the experts over here. So, so when the, the group of us came together to do this, which was at the beginning of 2017, to have the first discussion around this, there was a group of us who all studied abroad or were currently still abroad, mainly South Africans, and we'd all, in that time we spent in other countries, we really felt that you know, going to conferences and just looking at the general presence of and, and makeup of researchers globally that Africa was sorely lacking. You'd go to any of the big conferences and there were no representatives of our, of our entire continent. And this was just something that had been really aggravating all of us for a very long time. And we came together and decided we have to do something to give back. We have to, even if it's just a small workshop, if we can find 30 to 50 people who might care to attend, we'll all go and talk and give talks and try and share some ideas and learn from other people. And then it's just grown into this massive thriving community, which has just been the most amazing and rewarding thing to see. It's about sharing, it's about meeting people, it's about, um, obviously we are interested in the top talent here as well, um, but uh, we want to learn, we want to share, we want to meet, uh, we want to uh, yeah, just engage with the community here and help building the community, make people aware of what we are doing, 
uh, see if there's potential partnerships, collaborations. Basically what this function aims to do as well is to get people who are doing, where you can come and identify people doing similar work, having similar interests and who can, who can help each other to actually build better AI, better solutions and hopefully change Africa and build a better community, um, especially Africa community. Interdisciplinarity, everyone argues, is really important. And one of the things about interdisciplinarity is just purely uh, human. You know, you've got to meet humans and say, hi, I, it's great to put a face to a name. Um, and so you get computer scientists, physicists, astronomers, mathematicians, statisticians coming together and meeting when normally they would have just walked straight past each other on campus. So from that point of view, it's actually great. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that the organizers and the community that comes together at these events have done an amazing job of, of building something really from the ground up. You know, a few years ago there wasn't really even a field of machine learning research in South Africa. So for there to be such a strong community and a feeling of togetherness that's evolved in such a short period of time in, in this place is, is an incredible achievement. You don't know everything, um, so it's always nice to, to meet other people um, and at least find out what it is we don't know. Um, so definitely learn new things and also collaborate with uh, new and interesting people from different companies or academia. Um, in addition, just networking, like chatting between people, figuring out, you know, debating back and forth on what's good and bad ideas or alternative ways of doing things. But many people, a lot of us here, don't have access to these like industry leaders, people who are like leading people in the industry. So when these kind of events happen, there's obviously the avenue to connect with them, you know, share ideas with them. I really, really hope that these two things will come together, where you'll see a lot more academics working with people from industry to solve big problems in Africa. We're also using this as a networking opportunity to um, get in touch with the minds, right mindsets in terms of the students that are behind this type of initiative and being able to recruit them into our, into our business so that we can mentor them and grow with them and actually grow our business and take it that much forward in terms of actually embracing AI as the future. The industry is also important because they're sponsoring, so we have a couple of really, really wonderful sponsors from industry in South Africa, so we need also their contributions in future events to, to help grow these things because the universities might not be able to stem it all by themselves. So this is a very fruitful, I think, integration of both worlds. The bridge between academia and industry, is, I think, is an important one. I think industry would like to know more about what's going on inside universities. Uh, I know investors want to know a lot more about what's going on inside universities because these are the catalysts for growth. So if industry and analysts and investors don't know what's going on, um, then they're missing out on opportunity. And equally, the young students, the graduates, the guys coming up with these new ideas are missing out on the opportunity to find funding. So we're trying to bring those people together So it's always weird when we talk about situating AI in an African context because I feel like it does a disservice to Africans and I feel like you should rather do how is Africa involved in AI rather than AI involved in Africa. Uh, and that means that Africa has a say. It's not just here's some AI that's been built by someone else and we're applying it to an African context. That's not what I personally believe in. I feel like Africans have a, a voice in this conversation about how do we apply AI, where do we do it, how, what's the research behind it, what's the applications behind it, and um, yeah, I, I feel like Africa is going to have a large influence on this, and not only an influence coming very soon, but also an authority, especially on African problems and African solutions that can be applied worldwide. So I think it's a good time to bring, to look at the people, the talent, but also the funding, and this is maybe one thing that's lacking here, and, and, uh, but we're trying to do something about it. So I'd love to see uh, African researchers 
in every country, all coming together and working together at the forefront of technological advances, but also taking ownership for solving African problems using different ideas from machine learning and artificial intelligence. We, what, what I see here is I see entrepreneurs, I see a lot of innovation um, in terms of people trying to solve African problems utilizing the toolboxes. Remember we've got everything that Google and the top engineers internationally have. So it's a matter of utilizing those skills and applying it. So, and I think we are growing at an exponential rate um, in terms of just the people that's starting to get involved here. I mean, I personally think that Africa is a really good place at the moment just because of all the options or like all the opportunities for people to apply machine learning. There are a lot of people that are sort of dis are separated from the rest of the world and like don't get the chance to experience the value of these kinds of technologies. So I think by helping bring these technologies to these sort of smaller communities where they really can use it to, for base level things like optimizing water or things like that, they really can benefit the most from these kinds of cool technologies. Okay, if you just uh, look around and see the people and listen to their talks, uh, there is nothing to be worried about. Yeah, There is lots of uh, Lots of skills, lots of interesting people doing interesting research, lots of, uh, which is probably even more important, most of younger people that are very keen to become the next experts. And, and hopefully one of them will uh, set up uh, an African Google of sorts. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll all become very rich. <laughs> And also how can we like form our community, design our community to be diverse, to be inclusive, to be maybe also a bit different from the ones overseas um, and actually a lot more fun. WMFED is actually um, opening up with that dialogue of creating more inclusive solutions, representation in AI and I think one of the biggest topics was the whole language thing and how that's very important in Africa for us to have our own language being represented in our apps and tools. I think it's important to have kind of like FUBU models which is like a for us by us kind of thing because Obviously, whenever you're deploying or creating something, you come with an inherent bias, and sometimes that's helpful and sometimes that's harmful. But if you're coming in with a bias, all you're really doing is automating that bias and you're making it easier to, to implement that bias on a large scale. Um, clearly, we have a lot of skilled individuals in Africa, and I think if we collaborate together, we can really grow our continent. And it's, it's not just about, I mean, AI is a really broad term, so it's not just about us growing Africa. By growing Africa, we grow the world. One of my personal feelings is that Africa in general, well the researchers in Africa have this overwhelming case of imposter syndrome where people don't realize that they're doing fantastic work and, and are actually in many cases at the cutting edge and really able to contribute in fantastic ways. Think, oh, okay, I'm at a South African university, that's great, but we're no Harvard, we're no Oxford and things like that. Um, and what I hope that at least the students take away from this is they say, oh, actually, everyone is doing really great work. We're not like miles away from Harvard, right? We're at the exact same level. Um, and in doing so, that will encourage them. When you attend conferences, you're not intending it as an inferior, you're attending in conferences as, as equals. It was nice to see like uh, that everyone is having the same insecurities that you have and uh, I guess if you're doing something that's worth doing you're always going to have doubts uh, about, about that if things are smooth sailing it means you're just doing something that's too easy so it's nice to find people where we all having the same issues but we all can come together and solve the same problems been great. I'm happy that it's in Durban. Uh, usually these things happen in Joburg and Cape Town and it's great to come to Durban to do it. But it's nice to see that a lot of the same people are here but also there are so many new people that are here and I think that speaks to how much more accessible AI is becoming and also how much more accessible these types of conferences are because they're offering like funding and making sure that people get the opportunity to engage um, with I guess their colleagues. There's a lot of um, 
content that was shared in this conference and I really do believe that when we go back at least we can go back to the developers and the team and put it on the table and say listen guys there's new concepts that we can look at. Well uh, the Indaba X was very uh, insightful he actually learned quite a lot it was also quite uh, humbling in a sense that you see so many people who have achieved so much and who are doing so much it helps you see where you are in the computer science or more particularly the machine learning sort of environment and how your studies are providing an impact in the world. And, uh yeah, so I'm excited for what the future holds and uh, this, this conference is a nice uh, springboard, I'd say, to, 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 for us making an impact and, and getting ourselves on the map of, of research and academia.